Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and today I want to show you how to get started with the React Native project. I'm on a Windows computer, but these same steps will work on a Mac or on Linux, so you should be good no matter what machine you're using. So we're going to start out with the command line open. I'm on Windows, so I happen to be using PowerShell, but whatever you have should work. And uh, I'm going to start out with the command here, uh, npm install global expo, expo CLI. I already have this installed, but I'll, let's go through it just to uh, show the, let's see, just to show the steps here. There we go. So it shouldn't take too long since I already have everything installed. I'm following the documentation at uh, Expo, so it's docs.expo.io. Before you start with an NPM install, you'll definitely need to have NPM on your machine. So you need to install Node.js. If you want to know how to do that, I do have a video for getting started with, with Git. Uh, I'll put a link to that somewhere on the screen or in the description. And in that video, it'll take you through the process of installing Node and NPM uh, and also Git. All right, so that, that installed. Now we're going to start a project. Now, I've already went into my projects folder. So wherever you normally keep your projects, you want to be in that folder when we do this next step. We're going to type expo init and then whatever you want your project name to be. I'm going to call mine YouTube demo. And it's going to ask you now what type of project you want. So uh, you want to stick, if you're new, you want to stick with the managed workflow. Uh, if you know TypeScript, you might want to do the TypeScript one. Um, you also can choose one that has tabs and React Navigation built in. Let's go ahead and do that because that'll give us, if you're new, this might be the best for you just to see how navigation works, how tabs work. So let's go ahead and select that one. I just use my arrow keys to go down and I'm going to hit enter. Now this is going to build out a whole project for us. It shouldn't take too long uh, to do its thing. And we'll be able to check out the project files. It gives us like a basic demo project. Now you don't have to use Expo to create a React Native project, but it's definitely my recommendation and it's recommended by the official React Native documentation. Uh, it's, it's a great way to get started. It provides you with a, a much nicer developer experience. When your project's ready, it'll give you some instructions on how to start the project. But let's go into the directory we just made, so it's a YouTube demo, and now, I'm going to open this in Visual Studio Code and open this up a little bit bigger to make it easier for us to see what we're doing. And I'm going to open a terminal here in Visual Studio Code. And I want to start this project. In, uh, in a web browser. So we should see, I wonder if this opened on another screen. It should open up automatically once it builds everything. And then we'll be able to see the project. One cool thing that Expo does for you is there's an app you can run on your phone and you can scan the QR code that you just saw with your app and then you could run this on your phone, iOS or Android, and actually use your app as you're developing it. Uh, so we've seen here, I'm gonna make this a little smaller so we can see it. Oops, I just wanna be able to see the, the tabs. So I'll have to move it over, so I don't wanna block it with my picture here. But we have just this main screen here, and we have tabs. And this is actually our, our app, right? 
Uh, it doesn't look like an app because we're running it in, in web mode. You can actually use React Native to build web apps as well. But we'll, I'll show you now the code that runs that. So we have our basic package.json file. I'm going to make that a lot bigger so everybody can see. Let's make that smaller and let's get rid of this so we can see. All right, so we have our, our scripts, right? If we wanted to to do just expo start, it would bring up that screen that we saw that had the QR code there. If we know what, what we want to run this on, so if we want to run this on Android, uh, we have Android Studio installed with a, a simulator. We can simulate it on Android. We can also connect our phone to our computer and uh, run the, uh, the Android app directly on our phone. We could use Expo and that QR code to run it. The same way you could do directly start in iOS to run it on an Apple device. Or we could do web. They give us an eject command. And this is if we want to do something that is not supported by Expo, which in my experience is pretty rare. I've never had to eject before. But if you want to, you can eject. Uh, and then just a basic test command. Right? You can see what it, it's installed for us already. Uh, so it's, it's given us some um, React Native navigation. That's how we could go back and forth between tabs. We'll take a look at our navigation in a minute. And it's given us some, some Expo things. And of course, React Native. Right. Well, let's check out the actual uh, code for the app. So our first file that it'll look at is app.js. And that's in the root of our project. So this is a little bit busy because we chose to start the project with navigation. If we chose just a completely blank project, this file would really have not very much going on at all. Uh, but we can see here uh, it is using some of the latest in React. So we're using React hooks here. We get the use effect hook coming in. Uh, we have also are using the hooks for state. You don't have to use React hooks for the rest of your app if you're not comfortable with hooks yet, but I do recommend checking out React hooks and using them if you can. Uh, I, I definitely think it's uh, the better way to go. Uh, but we have some resource loading happening here. And then our actual app here that's getting returned. is giving us our navigation container and our stack navigator. And the first screen is that, that root screen. And we have the bottom tab navigator, which is where we could go from one screen to the other through the bottom tab. All right, so let's see where our screen's at. So it automatically makes a folder for us called screens, and that's gonna be our two tabs, and it makes a folder called navigation. And so you can see, like our home screen basically has that little robot image that we saw and some of the, the boilerplate text that we saw, right? Just telling you what to do, right? And if we, if we went in here and changed any of this text, we'd automatically see it in our web view. And then that second screen was a screen full of links to get more information. And you can see here, right, we have our our different links here, right? And for our navigation, we've imported the home screen and the link screen. So these are those two components that we just saw. We import those. And then we say here we have the bottom tab, we have the screens, and we're giving the tabs a component to say, like, right, when you click this tab, here's the component we want you to show that we've imported up there. We're giving it an icon. We're giving it a title. Right? We give it a name. And these, this bottom tab stuff, this is all coming from React Native uh, Navigator. Or, I'm sorry, React Navigation. <laughs> I don't want to get the name wrong. React Navigation. There's so many navigation libraries it's easy to confuse them. But this is a React Navigation. This is the recommended 
uh, thing to use. It's not the only option out there, but it's, I guess, arguably the most popular option. Um, and that's that's how your the basic routing goes in the, in the demo app. There are other ways to route, which I'm not going to get into because it can get a little bit complex. But this will give you two screens, and then obviously, if you wanted more screens to add, you could just copy and paste these tabs and edit them with your new screen. And that's pretty much it for the apps. If you look at like a lot of these folders, so these expo folders, you don't really have to worry about. If you had images or fonts, you could put them in the assets folder. Uh, if you had separate components, you put them in here. So like we have this styled text component so that we're applying our preferred font uh, to the, the text. Same way with they give you a component to add an icon into a tab bar, right? We also have constants. You can choose to use these or not, depending on your preference, but right now, like we have our colors. This is nice if you have particular colors for your theme, right? And your layout uh, for getting the screen, the screen width and height. Obviously, if you're you know, developing for different mobile devices, there's going to be a ton of different screen sizes. Uh, so this is kind of a nice way to be able to grab those sizes uh, without having to do all this and import dimensions uh, in every project. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. You can obviously add in whatever packages you want. And Expo comes with a lot of packages uh, you know, built in that you can use uh, if you like to. So you know, like barcode readers and you know, being able to access the camera, ac accessing different um, APIs for the device. So like geolocation or notifications, um, making the device vibrate, things like that. Uh, Expo makes that pretty easy. And um, that's pretty much it for getting started. Uh, at that point, I recommend if you're new, just changing some things around in this app.js file and in the screens. That's where you probably want to play around with at first, really, is the if you've gone with the tabs build, go with, go to these screens and start changing things. If you've gone with just the, the blank build, you're not going to have a screens folder. You're just going to have this app.js, so you'd want to play around in that file. But, you know, just mess around and change things. And... Um, You'll see it either in your browser window, like we have here, or on your device if you've chosen to use the Expo app and see that what's going on in the device. And that'll give you a good idea for you know how things work. Definitely go to the documentation, use the React Native documentation, uh, use the Expo documentation whenever you're not sure how to do something. And if you're familiar with React already, a lot of the, the logic of how things work will be similar. Uh, just, you know, your, your, your elements will be a little bit different. You know, you'll see a lot of views and text instead of divs and spans and things like that, like you would see in HTML. Uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult to make a few changes, be able to change text, be able to switch out the image just from this boilerplate code. So let me know if there's anything in particular that you would like to do with React Native that you'd want me to do a video with. Uh, this video will just get you started, and you'll have the demo app running, but really not much else after that. So I have done a lot of live streams with React Native, so I've done some streams on my channel and also on the Free Code Camp channel, so you can check those out if you want to see like a real React Native project in action, you know, doing some coding. I'll probably end up doing a few other videos uh, as I go along. Uh, but like I said, if you want something specific that you're trying to do, let me know. I'll add it to my list of videos. And if a lot of people request it, then uh, I will I will try my best to make a video about it. Uh, so until next time, uh, have fun with, with React Native. And uh, I hope you all build something awesome with it.